Hello! So in this video, I'm going to be going over how I made this chemise. It's actually inspired by a chemise in the Met that's dated from the 1880s. Um, and I just made it out of basic bleached muslin, cotton muslin, and then used three different types of lace. I used about two and a half yards of this half inch lace, and then I think it was about two-ish yards of these two different types of eyelet lace, one with a slightly smaller design and one with a slightly larger design. So the first thing that I did when making this was to figure out my measurements so I could figure out how much fabric I needed <laughs> and make the pattern. Um, this is actually constructed by just two rectangles, one in the front, one in the back, that I just basically cut a neck and armholes in and attach the shoulders. And then there's also two rectangles that I cut diagonally in half and attached to create gores to allow for more like movement room. Um, so the measurements I used were just from the shoulder to as long as I wanted it, which at the time would have been about the bottom of the knee. And then I also measured from the waist to the bottom of the knee to figure out how big those gores needed to be when I inserted those. Um, the other measurement I had to take was around the bust. Now when I did this, I'm aware that I'm going to be using this garment underneath a corset in the future, so I made sure that when I took this measurement I didn't just go around the bust, I also went down into the sternum to make sure that there would definitely be enough space for the garment to fit correctly under a corset. Um, I also took that same measurement, but just from the side seams across the back. So that way I could figure out how big the back rectangle needed to be versus how big the front rectangle needed to be. And once I had done that, I kind of drafted a pattern for the top of the front and the back. So this one is just what that looked like on the back piece. And then this one is for the front. As you can see, the front half of the measurement, the front half of the measurement around the torso was significantly larger than the measurement on the back half. So while the original doesn't have any gatherings across the front, I thought that that would be the best way to make sure that the shoulders fit where they needed to while also still giving me enough room in the bust. So I think we're pretty much good to jump on into the actual creation of the garment now. I hope you enjoy this video. Now that I have all my measurements, I'm just going to cut out two rectangles in this pattern paper that I'm going to be using. One of them is going to be the width of the back half of the torso measurement, plus about an inch and a half for ease and seam allowance, by about 12 inches tall to make sure that it's deep enough for the armholes and the back neckline. And then the other rectangle is going to be the front half of that measurement around the torso plus the same about inch and a half for ease and seam allowance. And that one I'm going to make a little bit of a deeper rectangle in case I need the extra room for the neckline, so I think I made that one about 15 inches deep. Then I went ahead and labeled both rectangles, just so if I ever need to use this pattern again, I know what exactly it's for. <laughs> then I needed to figure out the armholes. And based on what I could tell from the example in the Met, the armholes seem to be quite tight, smaller than what you'd frequently find in modern sewing. So I tried to find a shirt that had smaller armholes and use that as the baseline for my armholes in this garment. I used the seams on that shirt to kind of mark guidelines for the armholes as well as for the shoulder straps. After I'd marked out some guiding lines based on that t-shirt, I pulled out a French seam and used that to connect all of the dots. I then used a smaller ruler to mark out a one inch seam allowance in the hopes that this would give me enough extra material 
so I can make the armhole even smaller if need be, considering that the seam allowance needed is actually only about a quarter of an inch. Because this paper is kind of transparent, I can just fold it in half and see through to the other side, which allows me to just transfer the lines to the other side of the pattern easier. Once this is done, I cut out along the shoulder seam line and went in towards the seam allowance line on the armhole and cut around that. I marked a quarter of an inch over from the armhole on the shoulder seam. Given that the example in the Met seems to only have about a quarter of an inch before the lace begins. I then drew a line from that mark down towards the body of the garment that is perpendicular to the shoulder seam. I just kind of eyeballed how far down I wanted the insertion lace to go with respect to the armholes. I know I don't want this neckline to be super deep. My next line is parallel to the one I just drew and it's two inches over. It seems like I will be having about two inches of eyelet lace for the shoulder straps, so I thought two inches here will give me enough room to attach it and have extra space. Just to be safe, I did draw a third line, and that is a half an inch over from the second line to give myself some extra seam allowance if needed. And then I drew the lines on the bottom of the neckline, and here I did something not very smart. <laughs> The line closest to the bottom edge of this paper should be the point where the insertion lace is attached, and then I drew another line half an inch above that, which is where the eyelet lace should be attached. However, I didn't then go up two inches to make sure I had enough space to attach all of the layers of eyelet lace, which was very, very silly of me. If you are wanting to use this video as a guide to make this garment yourself, please give yourself extra room in the neck so you don't end up giving yourself a headache later, like I did. Now, as I managed to lose the rest of the video for uh, drafting this piece, and the last thing that you saw is this lovely puddle of darkness, I think I know who to blame. But it's pretty simple at this point, I just folded it over and traced all of those lines again and then cut out the neck hole. To make the pattern for the back neckline, it was very similar to the front neckline. I just used the same shirt to mark out the armhole for the back of the garment and the shoulder seam. And then I again gave it a one inch seam allowance. I marked the shoulders the same way in the back that I did in the front and did the entire neckline the same way in the back as I did in the front, including the mistake about not giving myself the extra room for the eyelet lace on the back. Oh boy. <laughs> now that the pattern is basically drafted, I cut out two rectangles that would be the correct length from that shoulder to just below the knee measurement, plus a couple inches for seam allowance, and that were the widths to correspond to the pattern pieces that were just made. I simply laid those pattern pieces over the top of each rectangle, used my pattern weights to hold it in place, and cut out the neck holes and armholes. After that, I lined up the armholes for the front and back pieces to make sure that the shoulder seams lined up, and put some pins in the shoulders as well as going down the side seams from the armpit down to the waist. So those parts of the sides and the shoulders all got a trip to the sewing machine. After I stitched up the side and shoulder seams, I went ahead and tried on the chemise. To make this a little easier, I kind of pinched the excess fabric in the bust that's going to be gathered later and pinned it down just so I could make sure that the shoulders were sitting where they needed to. By doing that, I was able to realize that the armhole needed to come in towards the chest just a little bit more, and I also needed to make the armpit just a little bit lower. I decided that the shoulders weren't sitting quite as I liked, so I pinched the extra material that was not laying flush against my shoulder and put a pin in that to mark where I needed to make that change. And now I'm just transferring over those marks that I had done with the pins with a pencil, so I can trim down where needed and restitch the shoulder seams. 
After I did all of that, I did actually try it on one more time, and the fit was much better. So now to go ahead and finish off those shoulder seams, what I'm going to be doing is actually felling down this inside edge. So I'm taking the seam allowance from the piece on the back of the garment and cutting it down to about an eighth of an inch while leaving the seam allowance from the front part of the chemise to still be about a quarter of an inch. Then I'm just going to fold over that longer quarter inch piece over the eighth inch piece. So I kind of encapsulate the smaller side with the larger side and then press that down against the back of the garment. Now you can see I'm just kind of finger pressing this seam. This cotton is pretty malleable, so I don't really need to iron it too heavily. Just finger pressing it should be good. And now it's time to start the hand stitching. So I just tied a knot in one end of the thread. And because I'm not a huge fan of visible knots in my work, I'm just gonna put my first stitch through the fold of the larger quarter inch piece and then go back out just to hold the knot in place. And I'll start the first stitch pretty close to the edge of the material. Once I've got everything lined up, and I'm just again going through that fold and then picking up just a couple threads of the fabric below. So this stitch will be visible on the outside of the garment, but because it's white on white, and it's just a couple pieces of thread, it won't be super visible. <laughs> also, almost did a sewing faux pas there. Don't forget your thimble. Just makes everything a little bit easier. Once I've gone through those two, I simply go down about an eighth of an inch, and then pick up a few more threads from the back of the shoulder strap, and go through that fold once again. And that's the basic stitch. So just move down another eighth of an inch, take up a couple threads, go through the fold, and then just repeat that down the whole shoulder strap. Pretty simple. Now I'm going to show you a close-up of my stitching, because I think this is important. My stitching is not great. Doesn't have to be. On the outside, it will still look just fine. Well, let's see if I can get this in focus or not. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, as you can see, stitches. Not fantastic. So here's just a little close-up of that shoulder strap now that it's all been stitched. And you can see the stitching on the back and the stitching on the front. The next thing I'm going to be working on is the panels that are going to be inserted on the sides of the garment to allow it to have some extra flare over the hips. To make those panels, I first cut out two identical rectangles. The dimensions of this rectangle were the length from my waist to the bottom of the garment, plus the seam allowance, so an inch on the top and the inch on the half on the bottom for the hem, so that distance plus two and a half inches, and then the other side of the rectangle. I decided to do 18 inches. That's actually going to give me quite a bit of flare in this garment but I want that. I frequently sit on the ground cross-legged, so I like to make sure that my skirts are big enough to accommodate any sort of movement without discomfort. Once I have cut out those two rectangles, I just cut them both down the center diagonally. Now this edge that I'm pointing to here is the side that is going to be attached to the edge of the front of the chemise and the back of the chemise. So the side seam will be done last, and it's going to be the diagonal cut that I made. Unfortunately, my camera angle here isn't great. I'm sorry about that. But you can see where I have the point on the chemise where the front and back is stitched down to the waist, and then the two front and back panels separate. I'm simply going to take the side panel, the first side panel, and line it up so that it's right sides together and kind of pushing that top corner into that corner edge where the front and back panel are stitched together. And then I'm going to take some pins and pin that down. Really, I just need to make sure 
that I have some extra seam allowance at the top. So while I'm pinning this down, that corner of the triangle needs to be about an inch, inch and a half above where the seam ends on the side of the garment. After I've pinned down that first triangle, I'm going to fold back that part of the garment with the attached panel so that I can then attach the other triangular panel to the back half of the garment. And again, just make sure that the top of the triangle overlaps that seam where the front and back panels were connected by about an inch, inch and a half. When I go to stitch this on the machine, I'm going to start by stitching where that seam ends and go down. And I'll do this on both the right and the left side of the garment. Basically, this just means that the last seams to be stitched will be the diagonal lines that were cut making your triangles. I hope all of that made sense. <laughs> so you can see here that I've attached that side panel, those side panels. I also stitched them together. And what I'm actually doing now is just folding that triangle where the side panels are back and forth over that side seam that's connected to the front panel of the chemise, giving it that kind of zigzag effect at the bottom. And this is actually how I go about pretty figuring out where my hem is going to need to be. So I'm just going to take some pins and pin them, as I'm showing here, right where I want the bottom of the garment to end on those side panels. And then just go down through the layers, putting in a pin at each point. Once I've done all of this, I'll go ahead and try on the garment again and move any of those pins up or down as needed. You might have noticed in the last clip that I was pinning through both the front and back layers. That was really just to make the idea of how I was doing this easier for you. You can see here that I am going through and putting a pin in the front and the back separately just to make the trying on process a little bit easier. Then once the garment is on, I can go ahead and adjust the height of any of those pins in case they seem out of place in order to give me a nice straight hem across the bottom. Before I actually put in the hem though, I am going to take this over to my serger and serge all of these inside edges. If I didn't have my serger, I would probably do these as French seams or just fell them down. After I tried on the chemise, and made sure all of the pins were in the right place to have an even hem all the way around, I went ahead and cut off the excess fabric so I'd have a nice straight hem going around. Next is time to iron. When I made this garment, I planned for an inch and a half hem, so that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm just going to roll the edge of the garment up by an inch and a half and press it. After that, you can see I unroll it a little bit and then put a half an inch roll on the top so that when it's folded back over, the final roll looks like an inch. And then I press that. Once I do have the whole thing ironed, I'm going to go through and pin it as well, just to make it easier to stitch down. Now I'm going to be stitching this by hand just to get a little extra practice in. Of course, I might have to wait to finish hemming until the cat moves. Oh, sweet little kitten. She just wants to soak up the sunshine. And if she can do that while laying on her mother's sewing project, then she's living the good life. Now that I have everything ironed and pinned, I just wanted to show you this. You can see how there's a little bit of gappage going on between these pins. I did that so that when I'm hand stitching it, I can spread that gappage out in order to prevent wrinkling. I'll show you what that looks like when I take this pin out. This sort of fold like this can sometimes end up giving you kind of a jagged point in the hem of your garment. So I find it's a little better to spread out the excess fabric between stitches rather than to clump it up into little folds. I'm going to try to insert a photo here of the finished stitching. 
so you can hopefully understand what it is I'm trying to explain. So maybe this will make a little more sense. The next thing to do is going to be the armholes. You can see where I surged the internal seam and folded it over and started rolling this edge. I'm putting in an eighth of an inch seam. So I fold it first at a quarter inch and then I fold it in back towards itself, giving an eighth inch little roll and then pin that into place. I'm going to do that all the way around the armholes. Then I'm going to use the same stitch that I used on the shoulder seam and the hem to tack that down. So you can see here the inside and the outside of the shoulder once it's all been stitched down. The next thing I'm going to do is attach the lace. Now when I do this, I'm going to stitch each point of this lace and tack it down to the edge of the armhole. Again, because of my dislike of visible knots, I'm going to take my first stitch and hide it inside of the fold that I created when making the armhole. And then I'm going to take my first stitch going through the first point on the edge of the lace and then coming back down through the folded edge of the armhole. I'm going to then go through that same point on the lace again, just to make sure I have solidly secured the lace before moving up an eighth of an inch on the armhole to go through the edge followed by going through the next point in the lace and pulling tight. Then I'm going to go through that same spot on the armhole to go through the same spot on the lace again. You don't necessarily have to attach lace the way that I am here. I'm probably going a little overkill on making sure that I thoroughly attach the lace the way that I'm doing here. I don't actually need to go through each point of attachment twice, but hey, why not? I would rather do that and just know that it's going to be secure than have to worry about something happening or accidentally catching the lace on something and then it pulls the whole thing off. So I'm just going to do the same thing all the way around the garment, going through the edge of the armhole, the point in the lace, repeating that, moving up an eighth of an inch, and doing it all over again. So the next thing I need to do is gather the front to the correct size. I'm doing this just by using my machine on its largest stitch size, and just running two stitches across the distance needed to be gathered. And then I'm going to pull all of those threads to the front of the garment so that I can try it on and pull on those threads in order to gather up the material across the bosom. Once it's gathered to where I want it to be, I just tie a knot. Now I would show you video footage of me doing this, but I don't think YouTube would find it family friendly. <laughs> the next thing to do is attach the lace. And it's important to look at our pattern here to know where exactly we're going to be attaching the lace. As you can see here, it's that line on the left that is where this lace, this insertion lace, is going to be put in at. It's about two inches away from the cut edge of the neckline. This is where the pins come in handy, because I'm just going to go around and pin down this lace where it needs to go. Now, I did actually have to pin this twice because I forgot and didn't give it the sweetheart neckline the first time. But you can see here how it's pinned down around the edges, about two inches away from the raw edge of the neckline. I also put pins in each of those corners just to hold everything in place to make the actual stitching of this lace a little bit easier. The piece of lace that runs across the back is longer than it needs to be, but I figured that was a good idea. So that way, in case it frayed before I had the opportunity to stitch it down, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Now that the lace is all attached, the next thing to do is to cut through just the muslin in between the stitches. 
I'm going to show you a little video here of that to make it a little more obvious what I was doing. The situation at the front of the neckline is a little bit different because I have only stitched down one side of the insertion lace instead of both sides of the insertion lace. However, I am going to go ahead and cut through the muslin here at the same distance that I did on the sides and the back of the neckline, meaning that I cut through the gathers a quarter of an inch up from where I've attached the lace. And then I'm also going to cut right in the middle of the muslin that is above the lace so that I can stretch out the muslin on either side and attach the lace to it while it is nice and smooth. You can see here what I mean by folding up the edges of the muslin. I'm going to double roll it just like I did on the armhole sleeves so in the end around the inside of the insertion lace, you just see two rolled edges stitched down in the same way as the shoulder seams. And here you can see what I meant about attaching the muslin to the top part of the lace in the center. However, you'll notice that there's not really enough fabric here for me to attach all of these pieces of eyelet lace. When I put the eyelet lace down in the way that they will be across the front, I end up with about two inches of lace and nowhere really to attach it to. <laughs> so while I can attach the lace over the shoulders just fine, I certainly can't attach the lace in the front. So what I've decided to do is to cut out this piece of fabric in the shape of the eyelet lace and then just gather and stitch the eyelet lace down to this little piece. I rolled the edges of the eyelet lace and stitched those down using the same stitch that I've used everywhere else in this garment. So now you can see what this looks like and what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to detach the insertion lace from the muslin that it's attached to currently so that I can instead attach it to the edge of the little panel that I'm going to put in with the eyelet lace on it. I'm just going to attach it to that panel using the same stitch that I used to attach the lace to the armholes. Then I'm just going to roll back the edges of this panel and stitch it down to the fabric on the sides of the neckline where I do have that two inch extra area intended for stitching down eyelet lace. I thought I should just go ahead and show you what the back of this panel looks like because I feel like there's not enough sharing of what the insides of garments look like. And realistically, if you look at extant historical garments, areas of the garment where no one is ever going to see frequently don't look that great. I have seen a number of examples of stitching that is really not fantastic on the inside of garments because no one's ever going to see it. Honestly, if your stitching looks like this, it doesn't really matter because you saw what the front looked like. The front looked just fine. There's no reason to seriously stress over something that nobody is going to be seeing. And this just goes to prove that, yes, while I have been sewing for over 10 years now, this doesn't look all that great. Could I have taken three times as long and made it look really nice? Yes, but I don't feel like that was really necessary given that I'm the only one who's going to be seeing it. Well, now also potentially anyone who sees this video, you all now know my dirty little secret. Not all of my stitching looks beautiful. Now you can see here I've started attaching the panel to the eyelet lace. I did start in the center and work my way towards the edge. This is just so I can make sure that the lace panel is definitely centered and that it ends at the correct distance from the insertion lace on both sides so that it looks even. Now here you can see I finished inserting this placket. I just used a basic stab stitch to attach the uh, rolled edge of the placket to the extra muslin on the shoulder strap. Given that there were so many layers, it was easier than trying to do a running stitch. My next task is to attach the lace over the shoulders. Now when I was looking at the image from the Met, it seems like the lace going over the shoulders isn't gathered. And that would make sense to me because a lot of the clothing laid very close to the body around the shoulders and the back of the neckline. So I decided to also not gather 
the lace over the shoulders or in the back of the neckline. Which, there's no pictures, so I don't know anything about the back of the neck. So I'll just have to use my imagination. You can see the eyelet lace with the smaller design is actually going underneath the lace in the front. I'm going to have it do the same in the back. So I need to attach that piece of lace before I attach the larger eyelet lace that'll go on top of it. Because the larger eyelet lace is going to go over the edge of the placket in the front with the lace on it, as well as the lace on the back. I'm going to attach both of these pieces of lace in the same way, and that is by laying the lace down so that the right side of the lace lies against the right side of the shoulder strap, and then I'm just going to stitch down over the bottom of the lace so that it's about a quarter of an inch away from the insertion lace, and then I'll use an iron to fold that lace over so the top of it points towards the neck. And then on the smaller patterned eyelet lace, I'm just going to top stitch over that to make sure that that lace will lie flat on the shoulders. And I'm going to do that by machine. When I top stitch the larger patterned eyelet lace, I'm actually going to do that by hand. The other thing I still need to do is attach the lace on the back of the neckline. Now I'm going to just insert a placket here and then attach the lace to it afterwards just to make my life a little easier as this is just a rectangle. I won't need to worry about the sweetheart neckline that I had to in the front. Now here you can see that I have attached the smaller eyelet lace on the shoulder straps and top stitched that down with the machine. Then I attached the bottommost layer of eyelet lace on the back, which is the larger patterned eyelet lace, and then I top stitched that down by hand. So you can kind of compare what those two look like. I personally find doing it by hand looks a little nicer than by machine, so when I do the outer layer of eyelet lace on the shoulder strap, I'm going to be top stitching that down by hand. I did not fully tack down the edges of the eyelet lace on the back of the neckline, simply because I know I still need to attach the second piece of eyelet lace, the smaller pattern piece, and that's going to go underneath the larger pattern piece, which I've already stitched down. You can see behind this lace where I've attached the placket that I'll be using to attach the smaller eyelet lace to. After I've attached that, the very last thing that I will need to do is attach that second layer of eyelet lace, the larger patterned eyelet lace, over the shoulders. And I'm doing this last because I'm using the example from the Met to attach it in the same way. That final piece of lace looks like it lays over the top of all of the other pieces of lace in the garment. Thank you for checking out my video. If you liked what you saw, then consider hitting that like button down below. And if you're interested in seeing me work on an 1880s corset next, then consider hitting subscribe to be updated when that video comes out. If anyone is still sticking around, here's just a few more images of the interior and detailed work of this 1880s inspired chemise.